Welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and today we are making the incredible black salami and I'm going to take you through each one of the steps so that you can make this at home and impress your friends, families, and neighbors with this eye-popping, show-stopping charcuterie. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our mold culture. This mold is known as Penicillium nalgia vinci. It's the white protective mold that's going to grow on the exterior of our salami. We're going to do that two hours ahead of time and set it to the side. We are going to start off with some pork back fat and to prepare it, we're just going to cut it into small cubes. It is important to know that you want to keep your fat and your meat chilled through the entire process. So keep it just above freezing. And as far as the meat goes, we're going to be using lean pork. Now I happen to be using some meat from the hind quarter of the leg around the ham area, but whatever lean pork you can get your hands on will work fine for this recipe. And we're just going to cut this into some small chunks ready for the grinder. This is what it's going to look like. We want to keep the fat and the protein separate, and then we're going to place that in the freezer. Let it chill for about 45 minutes before we grind it. We're going to be grinding our fat first, and then we're going to come back and grind our lean pork. All of this is on a six millimeter plate. And once we're done, we're going to pop that back in the freezer so that it can continue to chill. While our meat's chilling, we're going to rehydrate our casings. We're using 61 millimeter collagen casings. And we're going to go ahead and get our starter culture ready. We're going to be using the flavor of Italy starter culture. And this is going to add the necessary bacteria to properly ferment our salami. It's also going to give us great flavor, great color, great aroma. Once we add it to some distilled water, give it a stir. We're going to let it rehydrate for 30 minutes. And by this point, our meat should be chilled. So we're going to begin by mixing our meat first. We're not going to add the fat at this point. The fat, we're going to take it and put it back in the freezer so that it can re-chill. And now it's time for our secret ingredient, cuttlefish ink or squid ink. And if you don't know where to get squid ink, I'm gonna have a link in the description box where you can get your hands on a few packets. And cuttlefish ink is great. You can add this to just about any food item and it'll turn it black like pasta or cheese. And it gives it a really nice savory flavor. No off flavors whatsoever. So let's go ahead and add that to our lean pork. And once we get this added to our lean pork, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and begin the process of mixing it adding our spices, and then adding our starter culture. Now, don't worry, as always, in the description box below, you're gonna find a link to the printable recipe with adjustable quantities for this incredible black salami. And as we're mixing our meat, let's go ahead and add our starter culture. And remember, this is just the lean meat at this point. We're just gonna mix that well. It looks like our meat's pretty well mixed. I think we've mixed for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And now we're gonna add our semi-frozen pieces of fat. Adding the semi-frozen fat gives us incredible particle definition, really nice marbling. And that's what we're looking for. Once you've mixed your meat and it looks like your fat's evenly distributed, go ahead and turn your mixer off and grab a handful of it. If it sticks to your hand when you turn it upside down, then your meat is tacky enough it's time to move on to the next step, which is stuffing it into the casing. Our salami is in its casing, it's tied off, and I want you to notice that little packet in the back. That's a little mincemeat that was left over in the hopper, and we're gonna use that to test the pH of our salami. So we're gonna test the pH with that little packet, and let's go ahead and prick our salami with our sausage pricker. We're doing a couple things here. We're looking for air pockets, but we wanna prick that salami all the way around. And once we're done with that, we're gonna take that Mold 600, that Penicillium Nalgia Vinci we prepared earlier, we're gonna go ahead and brush it on. I personally like to brush it on, but you can dip it or you could spray it with a spray bottle, up to you. And finally, we're gonna weigh our salami and record our actual weight and our target weight. And now all we need to do is ferment our salami. During this step, the bacteria that we added is gonna eat the sugar in the recipe, producing lactic acid, lowering the pH. And this is all gonna happen in conditions between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna ferment for 18 to 24 hours. After 18 hours, I typically like to test the pH to see where I'm at. And I'm gonna use that little sample packet and use our pH meter from a pair of instruments to get the most accurate reading. And what we're looking for is a pH between 4.9 and 5.2. That's considered the safe zone. To use this meter, we just insert the probe into the sample and within just a couple seconds, it gives us a very accurate reading and it looks like I'm at 4.90, which is absolutely perfect. This salami is ready to begin drying. 
Let me show you one of the characteristic signs of proper fermentation so that you can be aware and kind of train yourself to know what to look for. Your sample, if properly fermented below 5.2, is gonna have a completely different texture. The proteins have been denatured. It's gonna be well bound together. It's gonna have a great aroma and great color as well. So that's what that's gonna look like when properly fermented. Our salami is now gonna go into a controlled environment. We have a modified fridge where it's gonna now hang for the better part of about 60 days. The conditions in the fridge are 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius with a humidity that averages 80%. As far as target weight loss is concerned, you can go between 35 and 40%. I like a firm and rather hard salami, so I'm gonna aim towards that 40%, but it's totally up to you. As soon as our salami has hit its target weight loss, it's time to take it out of the drying chamber, slice it up, give it a taste. If everything's gone according to plan, you should have a nice white covering of mold on the outside. It should feel evenly firm throughout. Let's go see what it looks like on the inside. I want to start off by saying this is a very cool salami, incredibly unique and beautiful. The seasonings are simple, salt, pepper, garlic, and as far as the texture goes, I was a little concerned about it, but as I give it a nice little tug, it seems like the texture is held together beautifully the way a salami should be. Sometimes certain ingredients tend to affect the way the meat binds together, but in this case that wasn't a problem. And as far as the taste goes, let's give it a bite. Wow, so good. This is really great. The fermented flavor really comes through and the garlic notes work so well with the savory notes of the cuttlefish ink. I do have to admit, it is a little strange eating a black salami, but I think that the color adds to the appeal of this awesome charcuterie and I hope you get a chance to make it. If you have any questions about this project, leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions on the next salami you'd like to watch me make, leave them in the comment section below as well. If this is the first video you've seen from our channel, we invite you to subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment and give us a thumbs up if you got anything out of it. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you in the next one.